So, uh, the first clinical manifestation when a patient has liver disease is usually hepatomegaly. Hepatomegaly, when we say hepatomegaly, we need to, you know, on doing per abdomen examination, you need to palpate the liver border. In normal children, you know that liver border is felt about 2 centimeters below right costal margin in the mid clavicular line. And in case of neonates, it is up to 3 to 3.5 centimeter that is considered to be normal. Any extension below this, these cutoff, it usually suggests hepatomegaly. But you need to understand that liver span is a better indicator of hepatomegaly than simply palpating for the liver border. How do you check for liver span? You do percussion starting from the top on in the right mid clavicular line and the place where the dull node comes, that is considered to be the upper border. Then you do palpation and try to see the lower border. The measurement between the two will tell you that this is the approximate liver span. There are age-related normograms and age-related cutoffs for different liver spans. Liver span, although not ex entirely accurate, but it is more sensitive indicator clinically of hepatomegaly than your patients with simply just checking for the lower liver border. Because lower liver border, sometimes there is a condition called as Riedel's lobe. Riedel's lobe can be palpable normally and so it can produce an apparent hepatomegaly. Sometimes, you know, due to visceroptosis can happen as you see in rickets. So, the abdominal, the liver can move slightly down. If you check for the liver span, the overall liver span will be found to be normal. Similarly, there are some variants where like diaphragm, suppose the right sided diaphragm is placed on the lower side. So, you will find the liver moving downwards. You can find 3 to 4 centimeters of liver palpable. But if you check for liver span, it will again found to be normal. So, hepatomegaly is usually checked clinically, although ultrasonography and x-rays can be used once you are evaluating. Now, what are the causes of hepatomegaly? Hepatomegaly, the causes, there is a table given in Nelson. It's a huge table lasting almost two pages. I have summarized it in a way that it is easy for you to remember, not losing count of that uh, important causes that you need to remember. So, first is hepatomegaly can occur due to increase in the number or size of the hepatic cells. So, either number or size of cells, hepatocytes is increased. So, it can occur due to fat storage, for example, in metabolic liver disease, cystic fibrosis, drug-induced liver disease, prolonged total parenteral nutrition, there can be fat deposition in the hepatocytes, Gaucher's disease, Neiman pick disease and Wohlmann disease. Secondly, it can occur due to glycogen storage disease like glycogen storage disorders including your von Gierke disease, it can occur in TPN, infants of diabetic mother can have excess glycogen storage leading to hepatomegaly. It occurs in poorly controlled type 1 diabetes which is called as Moriac syndrome. Please remember this potential MCQ. What is Moriac syndrome? Poorly controlled type 1 diabetes with hepatomegaly with other manifestations which may include growth problems related to growth and development that is called as Moriac syndrome. So, Moriac syndrome, please remember that it is type 1 diabetes poorly controlled with hepatomegaly. These are the two essential features of Moriac syndrome. Moriac syndrome is commonly seen in adolescents, not in very young children or in old age. It is seen in adolescents. Then is inflammation. Hepato hepatic number can be increased in inflammation or uh, there can be infiltration of other cells. There can be Kupfer cell hyperplasia. They are also liver cells, not exactly hepatocytes. So, that can be seen in conditions like viral hepatitis, sepsis, toxic hepatitis, autoimmune hepatitis, sarcoidosis, SLE, MAS and HLH syndrome. Particularly in conditions like SLE, MAS and HLH syndrome, you will find significant Kupfer cell hyperplasia. Kupfer cells are the phagocytic cells which are present in the between the hepatocytes. Then miscellaneous causes include alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, Wilson's disease and hypervitaminosis A. This is the first category. Second category is infiltration of the cells. Infiltration of the cells will be seen in usually tumorous conditions, benign tumors like focal nodular hyperplasia, hepatic adenoma, any cyst which can be parasitic cyst or some congenital cysts and abscesses like bacterial abscess or amoebic liver abscess, they all can cause hepatomegaly. Then it can occur due to malignant causes like hepatoblastoma which is common in young children, hepatocellular carcinoma more common in adolescents and adults and hepatic metastasis. The common causes in children include leukemias, lymphomas, Condition, uh, pediatric tumors like Wilms tumor, it can occur in Langer's and histocytosis, etc. 
so they all can cause hepatomegaly third is increase in the size of vascular space it can, it will be seen in patients who are having congestive cardiac failure patients with burchieri syndrome what is burchieri syndrome this is hepatic venous obstruction so the vascular space in the liver will be increased then pericardial diseases including cardiac tamponade it can be seen in hemoglobinopathies like sickle cell anemia and thalassemia then we, there is increase in the size of the biliary space it can be seen in congenital hepatic fibrosis carolis disease and extra hepatic obstruction of the biliary tract and then you have idiopathic reasons which can be related to redal slope or downward displacement of the diaphragm so these are the overall causes of hepatomegaly that you need to remember based upon the table given in nelson